and welcome to Books of Blood. My name is John, and today we're going to be talking about 50 years of horror fiction and the year 2008. So, we've got five books here, so let's go ahead and get the show on the road, all right? Okay, first up, we've got Those Who Went, Remain There Still by Cherie Priest. Easter Wharton is dead and his passing might mean an end to hostilities between the Manders and the Coys. If the elderly patriarch showed the kindness and foresight to split his land cleanly between his feuding descendants, then a truce could be arranged. But his final request is a strange one. Delivered across the country to the straggling remnants of his tribe, representatives from both families must visit a cave at the edge of his property in the hills of Kentucky. There he promised they would find his last will and testament. But there's more than paperwork right waiting underground, as vindictive old Heaster was well aware. In 1775, Daniel Boone and a band of axe-wielding frontiersmen struggled to clear a path through the Cumberland Gap into the heart of bluegrass, excuse me, bluegrass country, and they did not work unopposed. Hounded and harried by, the, by an astonishing monster, the Axeman overcame the beast by sheer numbers and steel. They threw its body into a nearby cave. It was not dead, and now it is not alone. Crippled and outraged for 100 years, something terrible has huddled underground, dreaming of meat and revenge. But its newest callers are heavily armed, skeptical of their instructions, and predisposed to violence. With their guns and their savage instincts, Heaster's grandchildren will not make for easy pickings. And that is a long synopsis of Those Who Went Remain There Still by Cherie Priest. All right. Okay, next up we've got An Evil Guest. And this is by Gene Wolfe. Lovecraft meets Blade Runner in a standalone supernatural horror novel. Gene Wolfe can write in whatever genre he wants and always with superb style and profound depth. Now following his World Fantasy Award winner Soldier of Sidon and his stunning Pirate Freedom, Wolfe turns to this tradition of H.P. Lovecraft and the weird science tale of supernatural horror. Set a hundred years in the future, an evil guest is the story of an actress who becomes the lover of both a mysterious pirate detective and an even more mysterious and powerful rich man, a man who has been to the human colony on an alien planet and learned strange things there. Her loyalties are divided. Perhaps she loves them both. The detective helps her to release her inner beauty and become a star overnight. The rich man is the anger is the angel of a place she stars in. But something is very wrong. Money can be an evil guest, but there are other evils. As Lovecraft said, that is not dead, which can eternal lie. And that is an evil guest. And that is by Gene Wolfe. Okay. Alright, next up. Uh, I'm a little bit, this next book, I am a little bit sentimental about this book. Um, this was published in the year 2008, and I read it, and I told my wife about it, and she read it, and she loved it just as much as I did, and we were both, um, very saddened uh, when we found out that the author, uh, Nicholas Picaro, um, when he wasn't writing, he was working as an auxiliary cop in New York City. And one night he went out on a patrol with his partner, and they were both shot and killed. Uh, I believe it was uh, in a robbery, a uh, robbery gone wrong or something. I can't remember exactly the details of it. So we're both kind of saddened by that, because this book, if you read this, um, you can see that this guy has so much potential. Um, and another reason that is kind of sentimental is that 2008 was the year that my wife and I got married. So this book's always going to hold a soft spot, excuse me, a soft spot in my heart. Uh, anyway, the book I am talking about is The Wolf Man, and this is by Nicholas Picaro. Marlo Higgins has had a hard life. Since being dishonorably discharged after a tour in Vietnam, he's been in and out of prison, moving from town to town, going wherever the wind takes him. 
He can't stay in one place too long. Every full moon he kills someone. Marlo Higgins is a werewolf. For years he struggled with his affliction until he found a way to use this unfortunate curse for good. He only kills really bad people. Settling in last in the small town of Evelyn, Higgins works at a local restaurant and even has a friend, Daniel Pierce, one of, one of Evelyn's two police detectives. One night everything changes. It turns out Marlo Higgins isn't the only monster lurking in the area. A fiendish serial killer known as the Rose Killer is brutally murdering young girls all around the county. Higgins targets the killer as his next victim, but on the night of the full moon, things go drastically wrong. And that is The Wolfman, and that is by Nicholas Picaro. Alright, next up we've got People Are Strange by James Newman. A talking bug who may not, who may or may not be our 16th president reincarnated. A beloved grandfather with a terrible secret. A man who takes coveting thy neighbor's wife to a horrifying new low. A community composed of sadists and serial killers. Two smiling men in ties carrying the word of God and a straight razor. You'll meet all of these and more in People Are Strange, an eclectic compilation of short fiction by James Newman. People Are Strange is a collection of tales that are as weirdly humorous as they are disturbing. Stories that will make you laugh even as you shudder. That is People Are Strange by James Newman. Alright, next up we've got The Wild Man. It's by Rick Hautala. Jeff Cameron is going back to Camp Tapiola on late Onwago to meet several old friends and reminisce about their childhood experiences at camp. But not all of their childhood memories are good. For 35 years, lingering images of their friend Jimmy Foster's lifeless body being pulled from the lake has disturbed Jeff's peace of mind. Was Jimmy Foster's death an accident or murder? The authorities had said Jimmy's death was an accidental drowning, but Jeff had always believed there was more to the story. Why, after all these years, did his old friend arrange this reunion? And why can't Jeff escape the feeling that his friend has a hidden agenda? What is this reunion? What is this reunion really about? And another question remains: Who is the Wild Man? And that is the Wild Man. It's by Rick Hautala. That's gonna do it for the year two thousand and eight. Till next time. Take care and stay scared. Bye bye.